Hare Krishna. Question What does crying for Krishna Ashla Prabhupada recommends in the nectar of devotion mean practically? Answer Crying for Krishna doesn't necessarily mean shedding tears physically from the eyes. Crying indicates a state of such intense emotional longing accompanied with such a feeling of helplessness that tears break out. When, when do we cry? When there are intense emotions and when we feel helpless about those emotions. Helpless about doing anything to deal with the situations that have caused those emotions. So that is the time when tears erupt. So when Prabhupada is saying crying for Krishna, what it essentially means is that we need to have a strong, desperate longing to attain Krishna and we also feel that we are utterly unqualified, that we don't have any devotion, nor do we have any steady discipline, nor do we have the determination to acquire the discipline, so we are utterly unqualified. And that's why we feel totally dependent on Krishna's mercy. And then that state of intense longing for Krishna along with the feeling of helplessness is what is referred to by crying for Krishna. Now we, in order to understand actually Prabhupada's statements, also have to look at his life and his other teachings. There were some precious occasions when Srila Prabhupada shed tears of ecstasy while feeling separation from Krishna. But most of the time, Srila Prabhupada <coughs> expressed his longing for Krishna by vigorously and tirelessly serving Krishna. And that's what he recommended to his disciples. You know, one of his disciples who was acting as personal servant would travel from place to place to Shila, with Srila Prabhupada and he saw that whenever Prabhupada was leaving, devotees would be overwhelmed by emotions, be beside themselves and crying to see, be separated from Prabhupada. And wherever devotees would, wherever he would arrive, devotees would be in tears of ecstasy to welcome him over there. And he felt that these devotees have so much devotion to Shri Prabhupada, and I am constantly traveling, I am constantly with him, and I don't feel any tears. So he was dejected, feeling his lack of devotion, and he asked Shri Prabhupada one day, and Prabhupada said, but you are serving me. So Shri Prabhupada emphasized that, yes, you are serving me dedicatedly, and that is important. So that means we don't want sentimental, uh, sentimentality and just um, superficial tears and we don't want to pretend to ourselves or pretend to the world that just by having those tears we have become spiritually advanced. We want committed service to Krishna and that commitment is the way we express our longing for Krishna. Krishna, I want to get your mercy. And the way I express that desperate desire for the mercy is by dedicatedly committing myself to your service. And in this way, as we keep serving Krishna, Krishna becomes pleased and he gives us mercy. Srila Prabhupada says that at one level, the tears of love for Krishna or tears Love for longing for the love for Krishna are the perfection of life. But then in the Chaitanya Charitamrita purport, he also says that the, uh, he's, so. First, he says that the tears are the conclusion of Scripture, tears of love for Krishna. But then he says that the Sahajiya's tears wash away the conclusions of the Scriptures. Why? Because they are superficial. Gaurakishwar Das Babaji would say that. When a, when a woman is pregnant and is about to deliver, she has labor pain and she screams. But when she screams, everyone becomes excited. Although they are concerned for the child, they are also for the pain of the mother, but they are also excited the child is about to be born. Similarly, when a devotee goes into ecstasy and cries, at that time everybody goes into, uh, our people around him go into, uh, him or around that devotee go into, oh, oh this devotee is having such extraordinary sin, uh, symptoms of ecstasy. But if a woman who is not pregnant, seeing all the attention that the pregnant woman is getting on her cries, starts crying, 
then this non pregnant woman may cry as much as she wants uh, but no child is going to come out even if some people pay some attention the child is not going to come out because she's not pregnant so similarly a devotee whose heart is not pregnant with devotion uh, or a sahajiya whose heart is not having sincere devotion even if such a sahajiya cries and some people become attracted uh, nothing is no spiritual advancement no no steady proximity to krishna in, no increased proximity to krishna is going to result by the by those tears so in our practical life uh, we can um, focus on committed service to krishna and also focus on some manifestations of krishna like some pictures of the deity some kirtan some bhajans which evoke an intense longing within our heart to become more and more attracted to krishna uh, which which attract us to krishna and by cherishing these that little spark of longing which is there by cherishing that longing it will be really fanning it and it will blaze forth gradually till it will burn away all the anarthas in our heart and then elevate us to the state of intense emotional uh, longing for krishna when we will be able to shed authentic tears so when shri prabhupada says we should learn the art of crying for krishna that means we should develop this state of internal longing and external committed serving to krishna by which gradually we will get authentic tears of love for krishna thank you hare krishna